So for the next one, I'm going to do with uh, Ryan. Do you come up? John. Or John. <laughs> and John as well. I thought I got out of presenting anymore. Yeah. <laughs> the Three Stooges um, Active Record. This one's a bit more about things like validations and so forth in, in Active Record. I've only really got four slides, so we'll um, find some way to tap dance. Yeah. So Let's in. Interrupt each other. Okay. <laughs> 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 okay. So. <laughs> okay. so <laughs> So um, one of the cool things you can do um, with your models when you're actually accessing data, um, reading and writing and so forth, is you can specify that data should be of a, spe a specific format, should be valid when you're either saving that back to the database and so forth. Um, here, for example, we've got a validates presence of, which means that um, when this actual post, this is another blogging engine, when this actual post is um, saved back to the database, it must have a title field. It must actually be there, and if it's not, it's not going to uh, save back to the database. Validates uniqueness is a, a similar one. Basically, when you try and save one of the instances of, these, of this class, it's going to make sure that there's a unique title. In other words, that there's no other record that has the same title. Um, validates length of is another one that's just checking that the title is within 3 to 20 characters long. And of course, you can change all of this. And there's a, a whole suite of these different kinds of validation methods. And you can also write your own, of course. There's also the validate method, which you can define and then do other checks. So when you look at the, um, the blog video by DHH, he um, actually uses this in one of his you know, little tests. He types in a few things, adds validates presence of, and then you see that nice red box at the top saying, OK, you know, this was missing, this post field was missing, or the name was missing, and so forth. It's actually um, easier to write uh, the validations in the, in the actual code here than it is to test for them. There's a whole bunch of um, like metaprogramming methods like this in the, cl in the class, but there's uh, coincidentally none in the test helpers, so it might be testing. But it is actually worth testing these uh, validations because sometimes they'll change the implementation on you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the module, how they're valid. The module will actually, that'll actually reflect or introspect the, some of the constraints out of the database. So if you've got uh, you know, something that's not allowed to be null, it'll actually build, build out the So you do all this at the Rails level, you don't bother writing rules in your... Yes, typically. Uh, right. Yeah. 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 The DHH view is not to worry about referential integrity at the database level, at the model level. Mm. His view is also, right. the relational view. database is my object <laughs> store and that's all it is. You DJs right. can yeah, go yeah. get another job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so nothing else is accessing the database. Yeah. You can put them in your micro. Uh, what the... Oh, different. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's also a bit of a tool. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, in the area of relationships... You need to fly for that. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't want to incriminate himself. I'll oh, put that recording. on the internet and I'll get a... Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Recording more <laughs> My name is not a... <laughs> so, um, when you define multiple, you know, when you've got multiple tables that have foreign key references between them, you want to have some way to be able to reflect that with your model classes as well, so that you can go from one model like posts, for example, to get okay, all the comments to this particular post without having to write the nasty SQL for having to do this. And that's where relationships in, or associations as they're called in um, active records come into play. Um, here's another example. We've got the so slimmed down version of that post class. Um, defines here another little mini DSL, has many comments, relates to this comment class which belongs to post. And John showed something similar in his code there before. And so by just defining these two lines of code, it actually knows then, again, through the um, uh, conventions, that uh, to look in the comment table, and the comment table is going to have a foreign key ID pointing back to a particular post um, record. And so when you go here, find by title test post, we'll get one particular record back that has this particular name or an error. And then this post.comments is essentially the traverse across the tables to get all of the comment um, records. Then we've just got a little bit of block here to print the actual information and comment back out to the user. Yeah, again, that um, has a lot of kind of assumptions about the name of your class, the name of the foreign key. Um, you can override that. So, for example, you might have um, a like a flag on the comment, uh, and the flag's annoying, and it's either annoying or not annoying. Um, you could set up another um, on the post model has many annoying comments, and then put um, a conditions field on that. Uh, relationship. Yeah, relationship saying annoying equals one or true or whatever database you're using and then you can get all your annoying comments. 
or important comments, like ones that even need explanation. Now, if you're paying attention, you might worry that this is going to call to the database for every single comment you have. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. You've got to be careful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's three people talking. We should get 15 minutes. No. <laughs> Let's try. Oh, that's actually all. Was there any more questions? Cool. No? Okay. Good. Yeah, where can I go to get stuff like that? <laughs> <laughs> um, now, I had